Welcome back to the show and or extravaganza. You know, Christopher Reeve literally zoomed to fame in the movies Superman and uh, the sequel Superman 2, but his acting career is taking new turns. His latest film is an adaptation of the Broadway hit Death Trap, in which he is playing a very peculiar character. Would you please welcome Christopher Reeve? Thank you very much for being here. Um, Pleasure. I saw, I saw uh, Death Trap. Now, uh, the, the character is peculiar, and mm -hmm. it seems to me, having seen Superman and also Death Trap, that this may have been uh, the more difficult of the two characters to play. Anything there? I tell you what, everybody thinks that I'm trying to make a departure from Superman, as though it was something that I have to apologize for, that's something I have to try to get away from. Superman is something that's a very important part of my life that uh, I'm very grateful for, and it changed everything. But <clears throat> I'm not trying to get away from it. I'm not trying to prove a point to anybody. I'm not saying, hey, public, you know, take a hike. I'm really an actor, you know. <laughs> it's, uh, Superman, in an odd sort of a way, was harder to do than Death Trap, where I have, you know, fabulous director and, you know, Sidney Lumet directed and Michael Caine and Diane Cannon and long speeches and uh, plenty of time to shoot it. So in a way, there's a lot to really sink your teeth into. And Superman, I was standing out there, you know, really looking silly. And I had to make, I had to make something out of it, you know. So Superman was a triumph against the odds, really, whereas Death Trap is, you know, right on the money, sort of a, a pop fly, really. Mm -hmm. do, you, do, you, um, y you do sound a little defensive about the, the fact that you... What, who, me? Huh? <laughs> uh, but uh, it, must, it must be both a plus and minus to knowing that for a generation of people now, until something else happens, you're going to be Superman. And I don't, by su something else happens, I mean yeah. when you decide to quit Get arrested films. or, yeah, something like that. No, if I never did anything else in show business, I would be proud to say that I played that movie and made some people happy with it. However, having said that, um, I would probably, if I couldn't get a job, I would still act someplace, you know, move to, you know, Hoboken and start a community theater or something like that. <laughs> you know, not quite the same thing, but nearly. And um, it, is, it is not something I have to apologize for. Fortunately, what happens in the business, if you do a movie like that, and if you have a stage training, which I do, the first thing that happens is the industry. You know, the Sidney Lumets and the, you know, the big directors say, does the guy have potential? Then the public says, is he interesting? And then the media says, how do we label him? You know, and that happens to presidents, it happens to murderers, it happens to actors, supermen, whatever. Everyone's got a label right away. So I'm no exception to this mm -hmm. rule. Yeah, people, that's right, they, they do not rest until someone or something has been categorized so they can be uh, reacted to or dealt with. I saw Rich Little do a thing on the Carson show the other night, which just cracked me up. And it's a perfect comment on how the media labels people right away. He was asked to do uh, presidents in one word. And he said, uh, so he said, say Lyndon Johnson, he just went, barbecue and immediately you knew from the whole thing I can't imitate it the way he did but you knew from a whole thing of you get an image of the man out there cooking steaks and pulling the dog by the ears and you know yeah. you have a whole thing or cooking the dog or and cooking the dog by the ears. Yeah. <laughs> and he did a thing he said what for Gerald Ford for Gerald Ford he just went whoops yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I just think it shows that it doesn't matter who you are uh, why does Time Magazine, for example, call everybody by capital letters? You know, actor so-and-so, mm -hmm. fated film star so-and-so, <laughs> 77, you know? A, a, a label and an age right away. So they're not ganging up on me, is yeah. what I'm trying to yeah. say. Uh, I'm stricken sitting here next to you by how... how right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, uh, I can help. <laughs> uh, by how young a person you are. Well, I guess you knew that, though, didn't you? I, uh, <clears throat> have you always have you always been this young, or is there something that happened recently? Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. That's but you are a very young it's man. It's called a silly haircut. Is really what you it know. Is, so. I get those occasionally. Yeah, that'll you, do. you go in looking like yourself. You come out yeah. like a duck. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> not, not that you look like a duck, mind you. But uh, there ought to be a law. I've been called worse. Uh, been called federal worse. legislation yeah. uh, on haircuts. Well, no, we have to interrupt you for a second, but right. we'll be back to talk more about haircuts with Christopher Reeve right after this. Welcome back to the show. Christopher Reeve is here. Uh, I alluded to, uh, uh, I guess, your newest motion picture, Death Trap, which I saw, and uh, we have some film of the film 
Um, <laughs> <laughs> film of the movie. Uh, or, uh, why don't you tell the folks what we're about to see here? This is where I do my Avon lady bit. You know, Hello, would you like to buy a movie? Only $5. <laughs> yes. Limited trial only. Uh, this movie, Death Trap, which is the crass commercial reason why I'm here, is, to t is, is about a guy, Michael Caine. Well, everybody's selling something, right? Uh, Not Michael me. Caine. I'm just, no? I have to be here. I'm just, uh... <laughs> <laughs> no. Michael Caine plays a writer of... Oh, thrillers. no, wait a minute. You'd have come on anyway, wouldn't you? No. <laughs> hey. Hey. Sure. You know, uh, I... I, I came on really because I wanted to order some cream of weasel soup and a jumping <laughs> steak. Uh, terrific. Uh, you could really open a restaurant on the west side with all that the stuff. The woman who makes know? this stuff does a wonderful yeah. job on it. Yeah, terrific. Can, and yeah. take out stuff. You know. Anyway, uh, Death Trap is about a You guy. know, the dentist just came on because he wanted to. <laughs> uh, you got a real thick skin, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. Go right ahead. Death Trap. Death Trap is, uh, is about a guy, Mike, played by Michael Caine, who's a writer of thrillers, who's going through a very bad spell. And uh, he's really bombing. He, we catch him on opening night of his later, latest play, which is really bomb. He gets absolutely pissed that night, and he goes home, and the next day, a play? <laughs> pissed is an English phrase meaning drunk. You can say pissed? You can. Pissed means you're pissed. Absolutely. I'm going to just bet pissed you here that angry. You, I bet you when Not we see this later, <laughs> pissed won't be in it. Right. <laughs> I just have a feeling that, uh... uh I spent so much time in London, I have all those phrases. They say that on the streets there, huh? They do, yeah. And, uh... Well, they are that on the streets there. No, but, uh... He, he, was, he receives a play in the mail written by Clifford Anderson, who was a playwriting student of his, which is called Death Trap, which is commercial, easy to cast, could be a big success. And he makes a plan... Why are these people running around? Now, I've just... They just showed me a sign here. Is this... Yeah. We will see the clip or we won't see the well, This is the kind of thing that pisses us off. <laughs> uh... <clears throat> what are we doing? Oh, we're going to pause now and go away. And, but we'll be right back with uh, Christopher Reeve and the clip. Welcome back to the show. Christopher Reeve is here, and we're going to quit goofing around here. I'm sorry. Tell us now about what we're about to see. Right. Back to the pitch. Okay. <laughs> when you last left, he, the actor was trying to set up his film clip. Uh, Michael Caine receives a script in the mail. Remember that part before the commercial? Right. Anyway, received a script in the mail by a former student of his, which is the ultimate commercial thriller that could probably make about $3 million, not including the Death Trap t-shirts. And as he says, if that's not a thinking man's motive for murder, I don't know what is. So he lures me down to his house. The idea is going to knock me off and send out the play as his own and make all that money. So here's a scene where I'm just beginning to realize what's going to happen to me. Okay. Christopher Reeve, Michael Caine in Death Trap. Take a look at the monitors, and at home, the TVs should do it. <laughs> Say, uh, Death Trap, and uh, very entertaining. It's a... Uh, Exciting and also humorous. Witty. Yeah, what I like about it is that it's a thriller in which you don't see people get blown away or get their heads chopped off. You yeah. know, there's a lot of, there's a vogue now for thrillers where people get ripped up, you know, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, this kind of stuff. This is a return to a classier, sort of more old-fashioned thriller where you're laughing one minute and scared the next, but you sort of, you're picked up at 8 o'clock and taken away, you bring you back at 10 o'clock and you've been entertained mm -hmm. and uh, not grossed out. Yeah. You know? Tell me, uh, hopefully. Uh, no, we take care of the grossing out part here. Yeah, we'll on this do show. that. We'll, yeah, right. <laughs> uh, that's our job in life. Uh, tell me a little bit about. Maybe you don't want to talk about this about sail planing. No, I'd rather soaring. not talk about that. Rather it's not very talk about personal it? to me. No. <laughs> sail soaring is. Uh, this is not jumping off a cliff with a kite on your back. That I don't understand. This is flying in a plane with no engine. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that makes plenty of sense. Much more Does sense. <laughs> but, uh, <clears throat> And uh, I, I fly uh, as far as I can and go where I want to. And sometimes as a competition, sometimes just for fun. But for people who may not understand what this is exactly, again, go through the description of how you get up and how you get down. I think they you understand the, how you get down. You do the best you can, right? Yeah. You, know, you go up and you hope you come down again in one piece. And every time I land someplace I'm not supposed to, which happens occasionally in gliding when the, the lifting air isn't working anymore, it starts raining, eventually you land, 
anytime I don't get back to the home airport, the press treats it, Superman crashes, film at 11, you know? <laughs> and, uh, so, <laughs> you know? But uh, this, it's not an uncontrolled disaster. It is, a, it is free flight. It's, uh, you ride you can... the, the thermals, the yeah. waves of warm air coming off the surface of the Earth. Right, so and why don't you, you ask you me the question? Yeah. Because I was... <laughs> no. Well, no, I, Absolutely. no, I find this fascinating. It's a lot of fun. It really is. It's the highest you can get legally. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> and is it safer than flying motored craft? Yeah, it's safer than flying a 747. Really? Absolutely. It all depends who's at the controls. Yeah. But, yeah, you can... It's a wonderful escape, and it's something you can share with people where... The nice thing about it is you can't worry about your problems and fly the airplane at the same time, and that's nice. Yeah. Um... We've had two other people on the show who've worked with Marlon Brando, and I know you worked with him for a few days. Mm. And uh, anything interesting come of that uh, relationship? Um, I, I must say, I don't, I don't say this to be vicious, but I don't worship at the altar of Marlon Brando because I feel that he's, he's copped out in a certain way. He's no longer in the leadership position that he could be. He could really be inspiring a whole generation of actors and by continuing to work. But what happened is the press loved him whether he was good bad or indifferent mm -hmm. where people thought he was this sort of institution no matter what he did so he doesn't care anymore and i just think it would be sad to be 53 whatever he is and not give a damn that's all i just think it's too bad that the man has kind of been forced into that hostility um that's but you wouldn't well he's here tonight chris <laughs> and, um, <laughs> I don't care. Listen, that's not something. That's something that I would say to him as well. I don't. I don't want to be accused of talking out of school. You know, okay. but he could be a real leader for for us. Yeah. Was it in, exciting to work with him though? Not really. No. <laughs> no. I had a wonderful time, but the man didn't care. I'm sorry. He just, you know, took the two million and ran. You know. Yeah. Hmm. So. Uh, I just still care. I'm a real beginner, and I just care so much that it hurts when someone's phoning it in. Yeah. Uh, he is a wonderful actor. He is a brilliant man. But at this moment. He just isn't uh, motivated. That's all I mean to say. Well, I appreciate you being here. It was a lot of fun. Uh, Marlon's going to kill me, but no, anyway. No. Thank you. Thank you very much. Pleasure. Christopher Reeve.